Hey everybody, and welcome back to Matic Models. This week, we're going to be doing one of my most ambitious models ever. We're going to be doing a resin pour. And not just any resin pour, a resin pour that is five inches tall. So to start this out, we need a base. And I'm constructing this out of basic uh, foam insulation that you can get at any hardware store. I'm using the hot wire cutter to shape this foam here into a reef with a little bit of a cave in it. And we're going to have a little surprise in there later on in the video. I'm just shaping it out here, just doing what feels natural, what would look like a, a reef structure. And I used just uh, the uh, hot glue gun to secure all of this. This foam can take a little bit of heat, so it worked a lot better than just basic styrofoam. I wouldn't recommend doing styrofoam with this because it has a much lower melting point. And there's our basic shape. And here we are with our mixture of the uh, sculpt mold and as usual, adding a little bit of paint to that, just in case any of it shows through, which I don't think it does after the multiple coats that we're gonna put on this to protect everything, but it's really satisfying putting all the, filling all the nooks and crannies here, and just smoothing out all those rough textures to make it a little, look a little more organic and primed it black with gloss Mod Podge. And here we are, we're just using that Mod Podge again. And we're putting down just regular backyard sand. This is from my, my kid's sandbox. And I made sure it was nice and dry, dried it out in the oven, much to my wife's dismay. And just sprinkled it on here, makes it a lot easier to manipulate and a little isopropyl alcohol and Mod Podge and water in the pipette there to make sure everything's adhered and doesn't go anywhere. And let that dry before moving on to the next step. All right, so I wanted the focal point of the underwater seascape to be this giant anglerfish. Um, I'll put a link in the description below for the STL file if you want to print this off on your own 3D printer. I cut off the bioluminescent uh, lure and I'm going to replace it with my own here by kind of drilling through this perfectly good model and then putting my own wires through it. And this is definitely, um, I put LEDs in the ship and these are gonna connect to that as well. But this is my first time working with LEDs. This here is just uh, some shrink tube to make it look, just to, to protect the wires, I'm gonna cover everything with some green stuff after. I'm just soldering everything into place just so it's secure when it's in the resin. I thought this would be enough, but it didn't end up looking correct. So I did, I did end up sculpting some green stuff on this and it's, it's a little big for scale, but, uh, but that's okay. It's, it's gonna be in like three inches of resin. This is my brand new Iwata Eclipse airbrush. Let me tell you, I've used cheap airbrushes all my life, and I realize now what I was truly missing. Just the way the paint flowed, mixing, uh, everything about it, no spatter. Uh, this is not sponsored. It was just a dream to use this airbrush, and I've used it multiple times since, and I'm just so happy with it. Uh, so if you if you don't own a quality airbrush run out and get one immediately because it makes all the difference in the world and uh, Here we are just putting some details on this 
fish. Rather large fish here. Nice white teeth. And I did some dry brushing there just to make the details pop. These are actual uh, coral. Somebody scanned um, actual coral and made STL files out of them. So I printed these off on my 3D printer. And I just think it just brings so much life to the reef having accurate coral. And I wanted to make them really vibrant. Um, I saw some pictures of coral reefs and uh, the ones that weren't dying looked very vibrant. So I wanted to make them as cool as possible. And then I wanted to put some plant life in here as well. And then just give everything a nice, a nice blending. All those details and different colors, I wanted to blend them all together before I painted the sand here. I feel like that, that looked a lot better after. I know I had everything already painted black, but this really tied everything together. This is, uh, this is some Woodland Scenics foam. People use this a lot for like trees. I used it for just like algae and seaweed. Just I thought that this reef would have things growing on it. Some bushes and things that again just kind of look like seaweed. And then I gave everything a, a wash. And this is actually an acrylic wash. I, I opted not to go with the oils because I wanted to dry really quickly. So this is just really watered down um, acrylic paint and I had to go back through and touch up all that foam because it really absorbed the black uh, wash and then I hit everything else with the dry brush this is just a light gray paint dry brushed over everything and it really makes those rocks pop it looks really nice again I was going for really high contrast because I knew it would be under a few inches of resin, so I really wanted everything to look really bright, really poppy. And here's our hero, our diver. He's uh, braved the depths here. And this again, pulled this off of uh, Thingiverse. I'll have a link in the description as well. And I just looked up old-timey diver uniforms, outfits. And that's what I went with for the color scheme. I'm really happy with how he came out. It's fish. And then I put everything on the display. So this was the most nerve-wracking part of the entire build, getting ready for the resin pour. We did have leaks, even though the copious amounts of hot glue I put on, it, it somewhere it did leak, and I used like eight sticks to plug those leaks. Didn't show that, but I'm telling you it happened. And there were some other details I wanted to put in before we did the pour, like suspending the boat, putting in the anchor, and getting all the wiring in place before we sealed it up for the final time. And crossed our fingers. So I used a, a two to one epoxy mix, so you can see I measured for to the first four and the second four with the hardener. I added a little bit of alcohol ink. It, it, it worked okay. Um, it didn't blend exactly how I wanted it to. Um, the color came out great, but I still saw there's some flecks of blue in there. That's not that big of a deal. But I had to do this over the course of three pours. Um, this makes it look easy. But this was uh, about 36 hours in between. 
letting it get to a tacky stage, and then pouring again. I really didn't want it to break. Um, all the information I saw out there said it would crack if I went too deep. Um, I did get deep pour epoxy, but um, it didn't go perfectly. Some of the layers you can see uh, lines in, but for my first try, I'm just so pleased it it came out at all and hardened at all and uh, it did a little bit of what I thought it should do and then after all that um, having to demold was just it took me probably a day to get all of this I, I condensed it quite a bit but I used isopropyl alcohol to make the hot glue um, come away from the acrylic and that worked great but getting it off here you can see I'm using more alcohol to get it to separate and it breaks and it breaks again and we had force it and that was just one side um, and all of the sides broke but <laughs> that's all right um, there is a, a little bit of a, a seam around the edge um, because of some shrinkage as it dries so we had to cut that and sand it and then I put in these ripple effects with the airbrush and some gloss Mod Podge. This was so much fun. This this was this is probably the highlight of the build. Um, doing this, I could have done this all day. Um, just creating that ripple effect. It really it really came out awesome. It really gives the water a lot of life. And speaking of life, adding a little seagulls and finishing everything off. Oh. 